Hey folks, David here with another main stage tutorial for you. Today I'm going to talk about main stage's arpeggiator. The arpeggiator is located in the MIDI effects section of main stage. And it's actually a pretty good arpeggiator plugin, but it can be a little intimidating and hard to find some of the more advanced features. So what I'd like to do is walk you through an overview of the arpeggiator plugin. I'll talk about how you can access the factory presets and then how you can dig in and start to do some programming of your own to program your own arpeggiator patterns and things like that. It's going to be really helpful and it's only going to take a few minutes. So I'm going to turn around and we'll start to talk about this plugin. Alright folks, so let's start to talk about the arpeggiator plugin. I've got my Sunday Keys template open today, but I've just loaded in the Deluxe Modern uh, stock main stage preset uh, for the purposes of the beginning of this tutorial. So it sounds like this. Uh, so to access the arpeggiator plugin, you can add it to any instrument channel strip by going up here to the MIDI effects section, clicking on any space, and choosing the arpeggiator. If you don't see the MIDI effects section here, if you don't see it at all, then just right click on the channel strip and make sure you have a checkbox next to MIDI effects. If you don't, then just click it and it will appear. So if it looks like this, then just click that and then you'll be able to access the MIDI effects. So I'm going to load up the arpeggiator here, and it opens up like this. This is the factory default. So what I'm going to do first is just do an overview of the visual elements on screen, and then we'll start to talk about the presets and how you can start to create some presets of your own. So up here at the top you have the play button. So if the play button is off, then you're free to play however you'd like. You'll notice by default, even when the play button is off, that your sustain pedal doesn't work. Uh, we'll talk about why a little bit later. When the play button is on, it'll play. Uh, and you'll notice by default, if you have a sustain pedal connected, when you press your sustain pedal down, this latch button will highlight. So that means when you play at a note or a series of notes, when that latch button is active, then uh, it will just stay repeating until you stop holding your sustain. Uh, you can also manually trigger the latch button, which is useful if you want to map that parameter to a button on screen and just play a sequence and then have it continue infinitely. Uh, you've got several modes here for how uh, latching works. So the transpose function is the default and it's actually really terrible. It's very glitchy, often causes issues. So I always recommend uh, trying the reset or the add mode first. Um, if I want to be able to add things to the latch sequence, so any notes I play will just be added to this, uh, this sequence, then you want to use add. Or if you want main stage to forget uh, the previous chord and start latching the new one when you play a new MIDI input, then reset mode is for you. For today, I'm going to stick with add. That's generally what I use unless I know I need something different. And then you have some controls here uh, that will help you uh, if you want to be able to really tweak that sequence on the fly. I don't find that I use these very much at all, but if you have the set to add, uh, then you can delete the last added notes by pressing this delete last button, or you can clear the whole sequence by hitting clear. Next here under note order, we have the rate of the arpeggiator, so you can speed it up, or slow it down. To the right of that, you have the note order section, so you can choose what order the notes you input are repeated. So they can ascend, descend, you can go up and then down, they can meet in the middle, where there's a random option. And then this next option, the hand, is actually where you can program the order uh, that the notes are repeated. So the way that you set this is press the hand, you'll see it glow orange, and you'll see this little unlock symbol below. That means that it's ready to receive your input. So then you actually play the notes in the order that you want the arpeggiator to play them back. So if I wanted to go uh, with, I'll play in C. If I wanted it to go low C, high C, G, and then E, I would just play notes in that order. So I would play low C. And then any time I would play, it will automatically stick with that sequence. Now in order to lock this in, you have to press the lock button, otherwise it's just going to keep learning what you do. So switch modes, set your sequence, and then press the lock. 
and then it will automatically remember that sequence. Now, it doesn't remember the notes you play, but rather the relationship between the notes. So if I were to play different chords, it would just pick the lowest note, then the highest note, then the second highest note, and then the, the second lowest note, and it would spit them out in that order. So it's not uh, like a MIDI sequencer where you can actually program the notes it puts out. It just remembers the relationship between the notes. If you need MIDI sequencing capability, then we actually have more advanced tutorials on that on our blog uh, on the website. So if you need that, you can check that out. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna go back to the ascending order. You have four variations for each of these modes. So you can just flip through them and check them out. And then you can also add up to four octaves above what you play. So you have all sorts of variations that you can get with just the built-in note orders. So below here, you have the Pattern, Option, Keyboard, and Controller tabs. Uh, the Pattern tab is where you'll spend most of your time. And you have two options here. You have Live Mode and you have Grid Mode. In Live Mode, it just takes whatever you put in. And the, the uh, upright bars here in blue represent the velocity of each note. And then it just repeats them. However you put them in, it spits them right back out to you as determined by the note order section up above. So when I play four notes in a chord, it just spits them right back out. When you go into grid mode is actually where you can create a custom order or pattern for your arpeggiator. This is where you can get into some really cool stuff. So by default, you have a one beat pattern. So when you have 16th notes chosen, that means that each of these 16 sections would represent one 16th note. So to add another beat to the phrase, you just drag this little slider down at the bottom and create the length of the phrase that you would like. And it's really touchy. It's very easy to accidentally add more bars than you want or more beats than you want. So just make sure that you're careful as you drag that slider around and that you have the exact number of beats you want. Now, if I were to go here and change the rate to eighth notes, that would mean that each of these 16 beats represents one eighth note. So I would actually have a two bar phrase. If I were to go back to 16th notes, then this would be a one bar phrase. So the way that this works is right now I have one beat accented and nothing else drawn in. So when I play, it's gonna hit that one time and then it's just gonna step through the other beats and then it's just gonna play only once. But this is where you can actually draw things in on a grid. So to add another beat or to the pattern, then you just click on the beat that you want added in. So I'll click on this number. You click wherever you would like and they'll get added in. So it's really simple. You can adjust the velocity or the volume of any beat by just clicking and dragging on the blue area. And you can make any of these beats polyphonic, meaning it will play a chord instead of a single note, by just clicking this little chord symbol below. So if I want all of these to output chords, I would just click on the chord symbol. And then you can also mix and match. You can have some single notes and some chords. You can also have a beat carry over into the next beat by clicking and dragging on the blue area and dragging it over into the next beat. So you can see now this on the third beat is actually uh, being sustained into the fourth beat as well. <clears throat> You can drag that out as long as you want. And of course you can adjust the velocity. So that can be really useful. Uh, when you've created a pattern that you really like, you can just hit this little custom tab down here and you can choose save pattern as. You can just type in the name of the pattern. And then you'll be able to recall it anytime in the future from within the arpeggiator plugin. There's also a bunch of uh, created uh, factory presets for patterns that you can load in. And of course, while you have your grid pattern labeled in, you can also change the order still.
can mess with the variation and the octave range to get all sorts of interesting patterns. It can be fun to mess with variations of chords, note lengths, velocities, and polyphonic or monophonic beats, and you can get some really interesting sounding patterns just by clicking around and messing with stuff. Uh, that's oftentimes how I come up with my initial arpeggiator patterns. It's just kind of clicking around while I'm holding a chord, letting it play. And then of course you can adjust all the rates and you'll have totally different feels depending on the rate that you choose. Really quick ones can sound quite frantic and the slower ones with some delay or some reverb can sound really nice and melodic and sit in the background. So that might not sound very exciting on its own, but if I really quickly were to add a tape delay and then a instance of silver verb, and I'll turn up the modulation a little bit here to get some of that nice chorus and then play. So you can get really cool uh, arpeggiator patterns just by throwing some effects after the arpeggiator in main stage. All right, so now I'm just gonna go back to live mode and well, I'm gonna stay in grid, I'm gonna recall the default, so we're just back to normal. I'll set the octave range back to one. We're gonna dig into the other tabs of the arpeggiator really quick. Second is the options tab. This is where you can choose the note length. You can make it more st staccato by making this a smaller percentage. 100% uh, is just gonna be whatever is in the plugin. So if you have a synthesizer, uh, that you're arpeggiating and it has an ADSR curve for the amp envelope, then you could set uh, the release to be what you wanted it to be. And then if you set note length to 100, that's what it would spit out for you. But you can also shorten that or lengthen that here. And then you have a randomization parameter so you can set some more interesting uh, inconsistencies in the sound. And you can do the same thing for velocity. Um, so you can draw the velocity in from the grid, and that's with this little option here. You can choose whether or not it gets 100% of its velocity from the grid, or if you also want to have some control over it here, then you can even randomize that. So there's all sorts of ways you can add a little bit of extra interest. And if you're playing in swing time, then you can adjust the swing percentage um, to dial that in most of the time. We're probably not playing with swing in our subdivision, but it's definitely available to you. And then you have the option to adjust the cycle length. Uh, this really only pertains to live mode. Uh, you just kind of want to set it to the grid uh, or to as played so that it's going to just pick up whatever you put into it. Next is the keyboard tab. Uh, there's only a couple things I find really interesting about this tab. So here you can actually set the range. If you turn on keyboard split, then you have the option to only have part of the keyboard range uh, arpeggiate, and then you can draw in the regular range. Uh, this remote option is really messy. I don't worry about it too much, but if you want to dig into it, you can check out the main stage user manual, and it talks all about how you can use, as you see here, when you click on remote, you can set all sorts of settings for how the arpeggiator pattern can be adjusted on the fly. I find this really, really difficult to use in a live setting, but if you want to dig into it and think that's something you'd like to learn, then check out the main stage help guide, which is right up here under window. Um, oh, I'm sorry, under help, duh. And then you just choose main stage instruments or main stage effects. Uh, effects will get you information on the arpeggiator. But I don't worry about the remote section too much. I generally just drag it all the way off to the side. Uh, but this just means... Down here in the low range, I'm able to play regular chords. And up in the top range, it's going to arpeggiate. Uh, generally, I like to use the layer editor and multiple channel strips to do this sort of thing. But if you're crammed for CPU and you need one channel strip to give you uh, more flexibility, then you can do that here. Uh, you can actually designate the scale and pick a key so that anything you input is going to play output in those scales or those keys. I tend to like to use chord trigger for this because I can be more precise and spit out exactly what I want, but there is an option for you to do it here. Uh, this next thing is the only thing that I commonly use in the keyboard tab, and this is the input snap section. This is really, really, really useful. Uh, if you play to a metronome and your source, your clock source, isn't necessarily main stage, 
or if you're having a hard time getting your initial uh, playing on the downbeat to actually sync up with main stage's clock, or if you're using Ableton or running tracks off an iPad or something like that. So by default, input snap is set link to rate, um, which just means that it's gonna automatically uh, sync to the nearest beat uh, when you play that first input. So that means if you come in right on or right behind the downbeat, then your pattern's actually gonna be one beat behind, which is not what you want. So you actually sort of have to anticipate uh, to play just a smidge ahead of that subdivision in order to stay synced with your clock source. And if you're using an external clock, it's even harder uh, to, to get the arpeggiator to sync. So changing input snap to none actually means that all the input you put in is just gonna automatically start right away. Um, this is great if you're using an external clock or if you have a pretty good sense of rhythm and you wanna use main stages built in metronome, this actually might be a little bit liberating for you uh, because even if you're not immediately on the downbeat, like to the, to the millisecond every time, you're still gonna get good results. So it's worth checking out this option to go input snap and set it to none in the keyboard tab. All right, the last tab is the controller tab. And this is uh, useful because you're able to make uh, assignments between uh, MIDI shelf controls, uh, some of the MIDI standards like sustain, modulation, stuff like that. And you're able to set a target destination for it. So if we wanted to, we could set our mod wheel, CC1 right here, and set the destination to be note length. So what this would mean is here, if I had my note length set to, uh, let's go down to 50, and we'll set random to none. I'd actually be able to adjust that with my mod wheel, like this. So that can be really cool. Um, I don't use that too often, but it's fun to know how to do. You can get some cool sounds. Uh, the main thing to know about this tab is that by default in the arpeggiator, uh, your sustain pedal is set to the latch destination. So like I talked about at the beginning of the video, when you press your sustain pedal, you see that latch button go active. And that's uh, pretty useful most of the time, but sometimes you don't want the arpeggiator to latch with your sustain pedal. You wanna use a button, or you wanna use some type of other control, or you only want the, the arpeggiator to play while you're actually holding the notes on your keyboard. So to shut this off, uh, you can just set the destination to none, or you can just choose off for the MIDI controller option. So this will allow you to make uh, those MIDI assignments as you choose, but just know that by default, your sustain pedal is actually what's going to uh, turn on or off latch. All right, folks, so that's a little bit about the main stage arpeggiator plugin. The last thing I wanna show you how to do is just check out the factory presets. So to access the factory presets, click up here on the preset area and go to factory and you have all sorts of interesting uh, patterns that you can just jump right into. So this can be cool to sort of see some ideas about how different settings work in the plugin and then you can always spin off of these and tweak them and make them your own. It's a pretty slow rate to get really an interesting effect. So. So you can just scroll through these and check them out. As you're getting started, it can be really useful. Just know uh, that by default, these all have sustain mapped to latch, and they all generally also use the transpose mode for the latch, which like I said at the beginning of the video, I recommend the reset or add mode um, for best results and most consistent performance. Um, yeah, but that's it. A little bit about Main Stages Arpeggiator. I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like or a comment and maybe shared it with a friend of yours who uses Mainstage as well and would enjoy this video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.